Everyone looks surprised and a little dismayed to see that I have invited the twins to my room that night. I know why, but... What are Ichigo and Ringo doing here? Oh, Shirahane-san, are you... You're going to tell them, aren't you? I made the decision after hearing what the twins had to say. Well, it's your decision, so I'm not going to fight it. Erika-san warns the Sasakis that it's going to be difficult for them to hear this, and they respond tensely. We're ready. Yes, we are. If Suo-chan is struggling with something, then we want to help, no matter what. They both smile at me. Isn't that right, sis? It sure is, Ringo. I mean... That's what friends are for. They know I'm hiding something. And I know that I can't possibly refuse to talk to the first friends I ever made. Right, you guys were friends with Shirahane first. I was first. You were second. Everyone laughs as Rika-san protests loudly that she was actually the first. I address the twins as I take on my Mite partner's role and pour tea for them. Ichigo-san, Ringo-san, I'm going to tell you about my search for Mayuri, which began back in the summer. And so I do. I tell them as I did Erika-san and Takasaki-san, and then Rika-san, about everything that happened in the spring and everything that's gone on since then. About all the hurdles I faced seeking the reason behind Mayuri's sudden disappearance and how I overcame each of them. And why I became the president of the Council of Nikaya. The Keys, Sion Basquiat, and the Topa of Agape. My chance meeting with Mayuri. Then how we ended up facing off against Yatsushira Senpai and Komikado Senpai. At first I thought about leaving out the parts about our upperclassmen. But faced with their earnest gazes as they listened intently to my story, I was hesitant to lie to them. Contrition towards the two of them, standing there silent as my swells up within me. I wonder whether it was too soon to tell them about Yatsushira Senpai. However, I stare at their bowed heads, sure that I heard a low whisper from one of them. What are you talking about? Sis, you're talking weirdly. I'm talking weirdly? That's good coming from you. Oh, what the heck? So that's why you stood, stood up for the election, and what's all this about a Sion Basquiat? As a connoisseur of spooky stories, I'm most interested in this tulpa of Agape. As the two of them start discussing what I've just told them, I find myself turning to look at Rika-san in amazement. Um, aren't you shocked about Yatsushiro-senpai and Komikado-senpai? Uh, well, I... もちろん驚きましたですが... Of course it's surprising, but... They glance at one another, I have no idea what emotion they're communicating, but... They must be shaken up about it. I... Uh... Say something. 
I'm so sure they must be upset, even if they're not showing it. Um, I know it's probably odd for me to say this since I'm the one who just dumped all of this on you, but... What is it? I... Oh, I know. I'll make something tasty for the two of you. Something tasty? Um, I was thinking that we should do something, all three of us, to cheer you up. Um... Like an excursion? Uh, um, if that's what you want. Getting to hang out with Suo-chan one-on-one is a super special treat. What shall we do? Suo-chan said the three of us. Are you sure? I didn't hear that. Hearing their cheerful banter reassures me slightly. What? How can you not be upset about it? Erika-san pokes Rika-san in the ribs for her overly blunt question, and Rika-san hurriedly apologizes. The twins look at us awkwardly in the ensuing silence, then scratching her cheek, Ichigo-san speaks. Well, since you seemed really concerned, I guess I should tell you that I, I'm personally not really bothered. I feel the same way. Really? But Yatsushiro Senpai and Kumikado Senpai have turned against us. Suo-chan has explained the situation, but we don't think Yuzuriha Senpai and Kumikado Senpai have actually turned against us. Having heard the whole story, I think, like, they might be acting as if they've broken bad, but they haven't really done anything terrible, have they? The lump on my head says otherwise. Yes, but from the sound of it, that was an accident. I mean, if they really wanted to stop you, don't you think they would have done a better job of it? What Ichigo-san is saying makes sense. If they really wanted to play dirty, there are plenty of ways they could have done so. Plus, they said they'd give you a head start, yes. I can definitely see Yuzuriha Senpai saying that. To me, it doesn't sound like she's changed at all. I'm surprised they came back to the academy, but I'm glad we might get to see them again. Indeed, indeed. Although it seems an overly optimistic assessment, their words give the rest of us hope. How wonderful it would be to know that they aren't working against us. If the two of them really had it in for us, then... They're a fearsome duo. I don't want them as my enemies. So I take it you two are officially our partners in crimes now? <laughs> like, you even need to ask. Why? 
I'm just astonished. It is such a rare and appreciated treat for you to acknowledge us as your partners, Erika-sensei. I said partners in crime. I meant it strictly in the professional sense. Seeing Erika-san's blush faintly warms my heart. Watching everyone chatter together, I feel a sincere gladness that I came to the academy. Okay, let's get back on topic. Is there anything that stands out to you about the keys Shirahane has picked up during her search for Kosaka so far? Stands out? I'm sure Shirahane told you her long and turbulent tale in good faith. She also had another motive. We want different perspectives. You twins have a unique way of looking at the world. Is that a compliment? Indeed it is, sis. Hmm. Well, personally, I do want to see it for myself. See what? The burned-down chapel? Yes, I myself am quite intrigued by it. It sounds like something straight out of the movie, Motel Hell. Now that she mentioned it, the rest of us haven't been to see the chapel either. It's quite a way into the forest. We can't go see the chapel right now, but there is something else I'd like to see with my own two eyes. What's that? The letters left by the Sion Basquiat girl, of course. Surrounded by the silent specimens, I think of those lines from the movie The Bucket List. How heartwarming it is to have friends who care for me and measure themselves by me. Damp, cool air pools in the darkened specimen room. But I don't feel the faintest shiver. So, anything stand out to you? Erika-san asks the twins after they finish reading the letters from the specimen jars. Ichigo-san turns dazed eyes to her while Ringo-san looks thoughtful. The letters were just as Suo-chan said, but... What is it? I just feel really sad. The rest of us feel the same way. We all looked over the letters again, too. And I felt the same gloom reading them again that I did the first time. How about you, Ringo-san? She prefaced her observation by saying that she herself is generally of the same opinion, then... There was just one part that seemed strange to me, she says. Put the letters down on the table and gather around her. Which part? In the letter left by Sayuri-san. With that, she holds up the specimen jar out to me. Just thinking back on the raw emotion of that letter, oozing with the pain and sadness of losing her MTA makes my eyes prickle hotly. 
結びの文なのですが。She wrote here at the end. She indicates the lines. Of course, I should have faced up to her. I should have apologized and made things right. But because of my own willful stubbornness, my Mitie is gone. I will never see her again. Rest in peace, my beloved Sion. The scrawled closing line speaks of her deeply held regret. I silently reread the lines, then look up at Ringo san. I wouldn't have thought anything of it if she ended with the rest in peace line, but then there's this tact on the end. She points to the hastily scribbled words. Should read this letter, I ask this of you. Take the flowers from Sion Basquiat's grave. I have no right to lay them there. We've all noticed this part before, but never discussed it. It seems like a final castigation. Sayuri berated herself for her sins. Don't you think it's a little odd? It seems to me that when she wrote this letter, she had already placed flowers on the grave, but was now looking back on her actions and berating herself because she didn't feel like she had the right to mourn. That's how I read it too. Really, if I feel like I regretted how I acted, I'd want to move on from it out of respect for the deceased. Yeah, I personally think I would too. Ichigo san nods. I'd cover them with flowers and apologize loads and talk to them about happy things. You two have really matured. Ichigo san puffs her chest out proudly. And I get a feeling. As soon as I get their words tucked away in a drawer inside my brain, the vague silhouette lingers in my mind, sharpens into focus. That shadow that's always been just out of reach. Laying flowers on Sion Basquiat's grave and taking them away, Sayuri wanted. What is it? I think I understand. What? Really? Thank you, Ichigo san, Ringo san. Talking with you has made things so much clearer. Think you're about ready to bring an end to all this? I stare intently into Erika san's eyes, as though trying to extract something from her face. Then I close my eyes, listening to the sound of the snow outside falling against the window. We're missing the one last key that will tie the pieces together. In the darkness behind my eyelids, Sion Basquiat smiles softly at me, while Sayuri Kifune reaches out a hand imploringly. The sunset gilds their features, making it seem like a scene from a movie. In terms of genre, it'd be a coming-of-age tale. 
An ensemble movie like American Graffiti, a young girl sets to leave town, comes to say a final goodbye to the nun she's forged a close relationship with. The nun's cheeks are flushed and she smiles at the girl as though gazing upon a delicate flower, then lays a hand on her shoulder and nods. She must have given the girl's decision her blessing. Side by side in the entrance, the two head inside. <laughs> Looks like it went well. <laughs> Mission is a go. The whispers resound in my ear and I'm instantly returned to reality. This isn't a movie. Right now I'm standing guard so that we can finally get the key. As I watch Takasaki-san and Sister Basquiat head towards the ballet classroom, I think back on the events of last night. In the specimen room, Ringo-san gave me the hint I needed to move towards a resolution. We're missing the one last key that will tie the pieces together. I said aloud. When asked what this key could be, the key in Sister Basquiat's room. I answered. A key? You, you mean... Like she explained before, the key to solving all this is hidden somewhere in Sister Basquiat's room. Everyone fell silent. We all knew what this meant, yet no one was willing to say it out loud. Erika-san muttered something about Yatsushira-senpai, then glanced at me like she said something thoughtless. So, why don't you go look for it? Chika-san contributed, as though a ball had been thrown up, and she was wondering why no one was going to pick it up. Prez asked the same thing, but Shirahane already turned that room upside down and found nothing. We need a lead. A lead? I mean, unless we have some idea of whatever we're looking for, like a diary or a photo or something. Things will just pan out the exact same way again. I don't know what pans have to do with this, but if it's a key, it shouldn't be that hard to find. No? <laughs> well, it's a key, right? Although I guess it might be hard to find if it's really small. She said it as though it was the most obvious thing in the world. A key. All this time I'd assumed that was some kind of metaphor. Even factoring in my own deductions, it makes sense that it should be an actual key. Huh? Oh, what did I say? Something extremely helpful. So, Shirahane, did you see any suspicious keys in her room? I shook my head. I did come across several keys, but they were all familiar to me, such as the key to the greenhouses. Then it's probably hidden somewhere. Did you see anywhere it could be... She suddenly stopped, her mind probably also jumping back to when we searched Komikata Senpai's room. We looked at one another and grinned. The innocence of Father Brown. If the wise man hides a leaf in the forest, then the key must be hidden in one of her many teddy bears. What is it, Suo-chan? Quick, go, we'll keep watch as planned. 
Thanking the two of them for agreeing to stand watch, I set off for the dormitories. As I hurry back to the dorms, I think back again on our conversation in the specimen room. It's great that you have an idea of where the key is hidden, but there's still one problem. Without thinking, Erika-san and I had clasped hands in delight, but Tagasaki-san regarded us with a troubled expression. What's that? Come on, don't give me that. You must remember how tight we've been for time in the searches so far. How are you going to find a single key in all those plushies? We untangle our hands and thought on Takasaki-san's words. Uh, can't you just check them all one by one? Maybe that would work if they all had zippers on their backs, but what if they don't? We can't exactly tear them all apart. Not only would that take too long, but none of us had any desire to disembowel innocent teddy bears. And even if we planned on stitching them up afterwards, we could only take one or two. I suppose we'll just have to hazard our best guess. The key is something important, so maybe she'd put it inside the bear she has the most emotional attachment to. So we just need to dissect the oldest one. <laughs> hey, do you have to be so graphic? Um, well, I agree, it's likely it'll be in the oldest teddy bear. What? When I searched her room before, I did look through the teddy bears, and I noticed that they were all clean and well cared for, so... We can't judge their age from how dirty and threadbare they are. Ringo-san voiced my concern, and everyone frowned. Were teddy bears made differently depending on the era? Like they have different fur or their arm sticks out like this. Oh. Yeah, I've heard that too, actually. There are certain characteristics that differ depending on the time period. Everyone looked to Erika-san as though she must know how to distinguish them. Don't look at me. It's just something I remembered hearing. I'm not trying to brag, but I've never once in my entire life been the recipient of a teddy bear. I had dolls when I was little, but not teddy bears. Same goes for me personally. I've always preferred playing outside, so I didn't really have dolls either. Ditto. How about you, Shirahane? You look like the kind of girl who'd be into teddy bears. I recall my father giving me a doll at some point, but my introverted self preferred watching movies or reading books to playing with toys. 
Surmising my answer from my silence, Erika-san seemed unsurprised. Oh, uh, what is it? You just need to know which ones are old, right? Yeah, but that's the problem. No, wait, wait a minute. My Mite partner responded crisply, stroking her braids and looking proud of herself. I can identify antique teddy bears. Sister Boscat's room is as still and silent as the forest outside. To me, the simple yet tasteful furniture and interior decor comes across as plain and frugal. I feel like the orderly and minimalistic room reflects Sister Basquiat's life. Let's get this over with. It's your time to shine, Rika-san. With the grave nod, she moves towards the one thing in this room that displays a strong sense of personality, the many teddy bears. She peers earnestly into each bear's face, inspects each one's stomach and paws, turns them over to look at their tails, and examines the ribbon around their necks. Looks like this is gonna take a while. I thought that anything old would have distinctive differences. I address my Amite partner as she carefully scrutinizes each of the dozen of teddy bears. I feel like I should make myself useful. Um, Mika-san, is there anything I can help with? I ask her. She stops and turns to me. It's okay, this is my chance to help you out for a change, so leave it to me. She beams brilliantly at me. It's hard to grasp the passage of time in this room, which is as still and silent as the wintry forest outside. If someone told me we'd been in here for hours, I'd believe them the same as if they said it had been mere minutes. You know, I'm surprised that our prez is a teddy bear lover. Perhaps unable to bear the silence any longer, Erika-san gently breaks it. My Mite partner responds without pausing in her task. I got a lot of plushies and dolls from my family when I was younger. Wouldn't you have preferred tea leaves and pretty tea cups? Well, I was only little, so I was happy to get those toys. I don't have them anymore, though. Come to think of it, I've never heard anything about your siblings. Did you hand them down to a younger sister? Rikasan shakes her head, gazing at the sea of teddy bears before her. I threw them all away, she says. <laughs> Feeling as though we've touched on something we shouldn't have, neither Erikasan nor I pursue the topic any further. My Mite partner doesn't seem to want to talk about it either. She continues her work in silence until... This one. With that, she holds a single teddy bear out to me. This is the oldest of all the bears. It's basically an antique. I can't see anything different about it. I'm with Erika-san on this. However, Erika-san turns the teddy bear over to show us the back. There. The thread is the same color as the fabric so it's hard to tell unless you're looking closely. But sure enough, there are stitches. This could be something. 
After a brief inspection, she starts to unpick the stitches. That's some really detailed work. They barely left a mark. It's like a perfect crime. I mean, it is a perfect crime. There is an indefinable expression on her face. She must feel guilty for betraying the confidence of the teacher she respects so much. Uh, is this it? Rikisan holds up an old ornate key, like something from a fairy tale. The head bears the crest of St. Angraikum Academy. This key is the puzzle piece that will connect all the others. Is this the key you're looking for? Yes, yes it is. Thank you, Rikasan. You're my hero. As I take the key in my hand, hope surges in my chest. This key will lead me to Mayuri. I hold it to my chest and close my eyes. As the wind batters through the window, I hear the labored speech of a secret door finally being pushed open. 